Okay, today we're starting our little uh, sojourn here right in Austin, Texas, North Austin, right above this, what looks just like a little barren lot, and indeed that's what it is, but let's look a little bit closer and we'll find a bounty, a wealth of native plant species. This is a vestigial little patch of dry calcareous limestone prairie, and our target plant in question is the focus of today's episode. Yeah, I think, I think this is a nice place to do it. Okay, uh, uh, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays But Botany Doesn't. Today, I's coming to you from the corporate offices, from property owned by the corporate offices of the Home Despot Corporation in beautiful Austin, Texas. Uh, and I wanted to show you a plant that we got over here. It's a plant of notable interest, the Texas endemic. And uh, it's endemic, more importantly, to a specific kind of habitat known as the uh, dry limestone prairie. You can see there's quite a few of them right over there. Now this is a member of the genus Silphium, which uh, I don't know, I think you get like 10 or 12 species. One of my favorite genera of uh, plant in a sunflower family. And this one right here is becoming increasingly rare as its habitat continues to get plowed over and destroyed. This plant right here is Silphium albiflorum. And look at it, look at it. So you got, you got a root First off, that goes down about 10 feet, but it goes deep down into the ground. It's a tuberous root. Again, it's an adaptation to this dry land prairie. It is about 95 degrees. The dog's chilling in the car right now. I left the AC on for her because it's a little hot. Okay, but this is a plant that is just so perfectly adapted to these dry calcareous prairies. The, the substrate, as you can see from that white soil, is limestone. It's calcium carbonate. You know, composed from the dead bodies of uh, extinct species of uh, single-celled plankton, single-celled foraminifera, and coccolithophores that produce a little calcium carbonate shell. And uh, it's about 85 million years old, so we're talking late Cretaceous before that comet slammed into the Yucatan, knocked out the dinosaurs. Back when Texas was an ocean, you remember that? Weren't those the days? Wasn't that nice? So anyway, it, comp it composes a nice soil here. You can see it, it is pretty barren, it is pretty dry. Uh, mostly grassland because the grasses remember they got that c4 photosynthesis so they can they can deal with the heat pretty good they're pretty uh, efficient photosynthesizers at high temperatures but uh silphium albiflorum albiflorum for white flower is uh dominant here as well and look at that look at those white ligules just thriving here and unlike most of the rest of the range that in this region because this area is undergoing a lot of development this, since it's owned by the home despot, is uh, preserved for the time being. Okay, they just got it fenced off. You can see I had to hop a fence to get over there. Don't tell nobody. They said it's fine, though. They, they said it was fine. In the interest of science, they said it's fine. You could come, uh, you could come make a video here. So uh, anyway, but this is one of the coolest species in a genus Silphium. You get Silphium terebinthinaceum up in the prairies of the Midwest produces 12 foot tall flower stalks, leaves that can be upwards to three feet long in some cases. It's a thriving plant and a, a really important part of the ecosystem up there in those mid, Midwest prairies. Many of those habitats are wiped out too. Uh, you also get a uh, Silphium laciniatum, which uh, I assume is sister species to this since it's got similar leaves. Look at that, and look at how scabbard those leaves are. Very stiff, very stiff, unpalatable to herbivores, okay? It kind of feels like a sandy cardboard, like like cardboard sandpaper, all right? Uh, so Silphium laciniatum is probably the sister species to this and what this evolved from, or they share a common ancestor because they've got a similar habit. But Silphium uh, laciniatum is a, a little bit more of a robust plant. It gets much taller than this. You also got Silphium perfolianum, the cup plant, which has perfoliate leaves that collect water around its stem. And uh, you got like eight, like eight or nine other species of Silphium as well but this thing needs to be grown more it's a very important plant and like i said it's becoming increasingly rare texas endemic all right grows from about up by the oklahoma state line uh and i think we're at the southern end of its range here in the austin area and look at this soil see that barren dry it's going to take a special plant it's going to take some adaptation to be able to thrive on this soil right there you got salvia texana see that not flowering anymore purple flowers when they are going off you still got those calices there covered in the hairs and the fuzz and what the shit, all right? Nice member of the mint family here. Hedioma's the genus on this one. 
Looks like uh, might be Hedioma revertonii. Lamiaceae again. Same family, the mint family, as that Sevia Texana. Look at that calus right there, covered in a fuzz with the with wizard, withered flower sticking off. The withered Corolla. This guy's still going off. Bilateral, symmetrical. Got a nice little landing pad for pollinators to land on. And look at the phyleries on its species. Look at it, like little little spiky lances, okay? Providing some defense. Little spiny bracts. Providing some defense. Oh, look at there's a little jumping spider hanging out. Hanging out right there, too. What's she doing over there? What are you doing over there? So, again, very hot, very dry. This thing flowers in May and June. Okay, like most of the other selfiems, at least the ones in the Midwest, flower later in the year. So, it's got a different phenology. When did this evolve? When did it branch off from Silphium laciniatum? If that is indeed its sister species. But you can see multiple adaptations to the hot and the dry. Those scabbard leaves preventing stuff from chewing on them. You got resins, thick resins. You know, they, another name for this genus is rosin weed. They got the resins in the stem. If you prick that, come back a couple hours later, it'd be bleeding uh, this uh, kind of, you know, tannish, orangish resin. And uh, like many silvium species, you got the... Uh, only the uh, marginal florets are fertile. Only, only the marginal florets are gonna produce seeds. Now, what am I talking about when I say marginal florets? So what looks like a single flower is actually composed of upwards of, I don't know, what are you, 100, 200 individual florets in there? And you can see those little white tubes poking out. That's an individual floret, that's an individual flower. So you got 100, 200 flowers inside that capitulum, that head. The ones in the center are uh, staminate. They're just male. So they got, you know, the styles just push the pollen out, but they, the styles cannot receive pollen. Okay, style, of course, being a female part or a part of the uh, pistil, the female part of the flower. Okay, so only the uh, marginal florets can receive pollen and uh, got a fertile ovary in there. See, there's this right, right the, there's the marginal floret right there, a ligulate floret, a.k.a. ligulate floret. So inside that tube where it kind of curls up like that, that's the actual flower and that's where that, the, uh, receptive gynoecium that receptive uh, style is going to be style and stigma see that okay these flowers are just about done we're at the end of the uh, season here we're you know tales of phenological woe we're at the end of the uh, floral phenology these are just finishing up anyway so there right there is a great example of a male on the right and a female on the left floret see that you got those that long looks like a little white hair coming out of where that uh, that ray where that ray flower kind of curls in see that that's the that's the uh those are that's those are sty one of the two style branches and that's where the pollen goes it receives pollen and you know leads to a little uh ovary down at the bottom and so that'll, that'll mature that'll mature once it's pollinated and turn into a little seed on the right notice how it's just a little white rod poking out of that black anther tube that black thing is the anther tube uh and then the corolla is that that white tube that the black tube is coming out of so that black is the anther tube, the anthers face inward, and you can see little white pollen grains on that white rod that's coming out of the black tube. Is this confusing the shit out of you yet? Maybe, it's fine, don't worry, you can watch it again. So you got a, got a playback button right there. All right, so notice how that white rod that's coming out of that black tube doesn't branch out into a Y, like most members of the sunflower family should do. That right there tells you that this is just presenting pollen, it's not receptive. And that's most of the tribe Anglomaniinae, which is the tribe of the sunflower family, which the Silphiums are in. Silphium is such a goddamn cool genus. You might be intimidated by Asteraceae. That's fine. So was I. A lot of the goddamn flowers look the same. All right. Damn yellow composites, if they're yellow. All right. But you look closer, and you, there's a lot of cool stuff going on. And if, for those flowers that just look all, all the same, you don't don't focus on the top of the floor. You got to get you know shots of those phyleries, which I'm looking at right there on the side. You got to get a side shot of that flower because that's how you diagnose them when they all you know are goddamn yellow flowers. So you know this is one of the most ecologically successful plant families on planet Earth. Wouldn't hurt you to know a thing or two about it. So again, disc florets, the central florets in this flower are staminate. They're just male, and the outer florets, the ligulate florets, each having a little white ray on them are uh pistillate they're female so you'll only get you just basically get a ring of seeds when this thing's done in a month or two all right and these you know you should be goddamn germinating these put these in your goddamn especially you live in austin you live in texas 
on a Edwards Plateau, anywhere you get the limestone, grow this goddamn plant, all right? You're really gonna trust Home Depot to fucking manage this? this they're gonna sell this land like a crackhead would, all right? Liquidate everything. The minute they need money or the minute they get greedy, you get some new CEO who wants to change things up, pay the workers a couple bucks less, make them work longer, you know, and they want to please the shareholders. They'll whore this land out. They'll de demolish all this, build a fucking... Who knows what they'll sell it for? You know, there's no end to this stupid shit and this shit for brain ideas. Step over and step over a dollar to get a dime. Spent 15 years working for a company that did just that, so I know it well. All right, I've been a student of American capitalism. I've seen how it goes. I've been paying attention. All right, who knows though? Maybe you got a, a nice guy up there in a corporate office who wants to preserve it and you know appreciates wildflowers. Probably not, but you never know. It can happen. So this is why you got to grow this shit in your yard. Sylvia Mabel Florum is a fucking banger. What a cool plant. Look at this guy, too. Nice gentian. Ooh, one of the Zeltneras. Pink gentians. You like pink gentians? You prick. I do. Ooh, it's fancy. Look, you got a little tube ovary, little green tube, and then you got those five distinct petals, and then they got some fucking... You know what? The Zeltneras got some weird fucking anthers on them. Curly Q anthers. If I could get closer, I'd show you. Look at that. See that? Kind of spiral anthers. Gentians. Gentianaceae is the family. Gentians got some cool... Some really cool members of that family. They got a parasite in that family too. Uh, I think it's a mycohetrotroph. I see there's there's some of that salvia texan is still going off. God, I love this plant. Look at how hairy it is. Ooh. Again, that landing pad for the pollinator is nice. With, along with those calices. It's a goddamn calyx. You got the, the two to four seeds inside there. And what's up with this coreopsis, huh? Look at it. You got the colliculi. That's a good giveaway for the uh, coreopsidae tribe. See those colliculi? Those little spiky bracts at the base of that uh, that uh, involucre. You know, phyleries are kind of, you can't even really see them right there. There's, oh, yeah, there, 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 there. Anyway, look at that. What's, what's going on there? Those, yeah, see, there you go. See the Y shape of those styles in the center. In the center, the florets are are, are in a later, earlier stage of maturity than the ones on the outside. Because remember, members of Asteraceae, the florets mature from the outside in. So those, the ones on the inside are just just starting to present pollen. Oh, there we go. There's there's one that's still in full bloom. Look at those individual florets. See that? The ones in the center are the male. It's just a little white rat. It doesn't open into the Y shape like the ones at the bottom do. See that Y shape? Those long ass styles down there at the base. So pistillate on a margin. Yeah, I'll say this five fucking times. Maybe you'll finally get it. Pistillate. On the ligules, the ligulate ray florets are pistillate, they're female, and the disc florets are male. And then there's at the top of that uh, little spike, there's at the top of that racine, you see you got the, the top of the inflorescence, you got a, a post-mature flower. See, it's already dead, the ligules fell off, and those little pink things are the receptacular breaks, right, the palea. And the seeds are just maturing right in there. Look at this little malvaceous bastard. How about that? Look at it, look at the, uh lichen on the ground as well lichen and cyanobacteria just in a dormant state not dead just dormant still alive just waiting for cooler temperatures and some moisture kind of diversity is shit here looks it's pretty nice there's that salvia again got the zeltnera the hedioma coreopsis god damn you got liatris too but those won't be going off till august or september that's a fucking banger plant too another member of the sunflower family asteraceae yeah, got a milkweed going off, Asclepius asperula. See, there's the old follicle all dried out, already open to release the seed. These get it done quick because it's hot as balls here in the summer. So they're going off in spring. And look, you can see it's got a massive root down there. Probably a fucking massive. Look, that's how big it is. It's at least three inches diameter. You got, it's got the shoots. So these shoots can get mowed. They can get gnawed. The plant will be fine. It'll come back next spring or this year after a rain possibly. And just put up vegetative parts again. But there's those those beautiful milkweed leaves. Oh, they're not opposite. Look at that. They're alternate. Huh? Rare you see a milkweed with the alternate leaves. Most most are opposite. You know, that's normally a diagnostic vegetative trait for the family. Nice. Asshole. How am I going to get over that fence without tearing my pants? Oh, look. It's Malamu hair. It's Nidoscolis over there with the spines that got the serotonin in them. You get stung by those, it doesn't just go away in a day. It hurts for a while, and then uh, you get like an itchy welt that lasts for two weeks. It's kind of nice. Flowers smell incredible, though. 
big genus. Some of the Mexican ones get upwards of 15 feet tall. There's, there's the spot to hose down your truck, if there ever was one, it's a good spot. Anyway, look at this gravel prairie, okay? The barren nature is what makes this so interesting to me, because you know that means it's a stressful spot for plants to grow on, meaning anything that does grow here is gonna be, tends to be specially adapted to doing so, to coping with that harsh, dry exposure like the Silphium albiflorum. You know, look at these, these flowers are still going off. These are like, uh, like full frontal, Oh, look at it. Oh, that's nice. God damn it. Protected for the time being by the home despot. You know, in case you know, you're working there, underpaid, answering questions from angry Karens and angry grandpas all day, you know, uh, and you need a spot to come cool down. You think the employees are allowed to come here? Maybe not. It's probably for the, for the corporate employees. I don't know. Anyway, they, this, is, this is fucking, this is great. All right. And probably not preserved on purpose, just, just preserved as a byproduct, but nonetheless, ooh. Look at it, look at that little mallow, huh? Cyta butifolia. Little member of the cotton family. Look at all those stamens. All those uh, stamens poking off with the uh, little uh, bug antenna anthers up top. Again, just tiny hairs on everything. Then over here, we got a nice member of the coffee family, Rubiaceae. Stenaria nigra canes, another super common plant. Rubiaceae is the family here, the coffee family. Four petals, pink petals, and uh, opposite leaves. And those little uh, kind of ridged shoots like that. There's Gayardia too, how about that? And lastly, we're gonna, we're gonna look at this banger milkweed right here. Western extent of its range, you get this along uh, the eastern seaboard. It's an east, more of an eastern species. Uh, this is uh, Asclepias viridiflora. Okay, coming up, still still flowering, unlike uh, Asperula, which is done already. Look at those uh, globose umbels, though. Look at those, look at those flowers. How many flowers inside that single inflorescence, inside that single uh, globe-shaped umbel? Look at that. Oh my God! What the, what the shit? We got those. What are those little, uh, those pink hoods, like maroon hoods? Got to get up there and look closer. Yeah. So those those maroon things are the hoods. Okay, that's a, that's a, a safe word in the milkweed dungeon, okay? That's a, that's a key word of uh, Asclepius flower morph morphology uh, terminology right there. Pink hoods, those reflex things right there are the uh, petals, and you got sepals beneath that, beneath that little skirt of petals. And of course, there's that massive stigmatic slit in between those two pink hoods. That's a banger plant right there. God damn, look at that. What a, what a beaut. And you got that nice venation oh, on those leaves nice. as well. See that? Got the hairs on there and shit. Yeah, yeah little little hairs. Almost kind of like scales. Look at those individual flowers. The whole thing, just a giant nectar buffet. What's going on up top of that uh, gynostegium? Huh? Those little white things. Those little white frilly shits. What is that? Oh, it smells so good. Look, and then you got more uh, inflorescences that haven't uh, haven't uh, bloomed yet. Ah! See, this is where I came a couple years ago, and now they got it fenced off, probably because they had some tweaker camps in the bushes over there. So we get, you know, right here, we got a nice tapestry of uh, homeless tweaker camps and bleak modernist corporate architecture. So that right there, it's a great analogy for the future of life in the United States. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I, you know, I won't rant too much, you know, well, the, oh, what's this? Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, we got a Ruelia. What's this guy? Oh yeah. How about that? Nice Ruelia species. They can't, they see. Now see, that's what the seeds look like. See, just basically a little part of the filary that just uh, peeled off. These are immature. Probably won't be good. I'll keep them anyway. See if they just mature and ripen on their own. But see, there's those, uh, the result of those ligulate florets. So only the marginal ligulate florets are fertile. And see, look, just like a sunflower seed, they got that phytomelanin in his seed coat, that little uh, black pigment. See, there's the uh, earlier blooming Asclepius asperula with that fruit just popping off. Might take some of these seeds. Disperse a little and take some. See, you got the seeds, then you got the coma. That white fluffy shit's called the coma. Another milkweed term right there. 
Anyway, all right, we're gonna move on to a more uh, disturbed and destroyed spot, but it'll be important because you'll learn a thing or two. All right, here we go. This, this is fucking terrible. This is like they're not even trying. Look at that building. It's like a fuck, what is it? It's like a fucking prison. Oh, and then this lot is up for lease. So I was here two years ago and I seen all that Bacchus, it's all Bacchus Neglecta in the background, just covered in American skipper butterflies. It's a real soothing scene. And now it's a really uh, nauseating scene and it'll get even grosser as time goes on. It's too bad. But yeah, you can see they just, they bulldoze all. There was a whole shitload of na cool native prairie plants right there and a native Bacchus. Just, you know, 10 feet tall, covered in white fragrant flowers and butterflies. And and now it's just, uh, you know, well, it makes you want to die. All right, let's keep going on. Look, it's, I had to come get another view of this. Look, Soviet block housing chic. <laughs> Who designs these fucking buildings? God, are they drinking NyQuil or what? It's like, you know, I don't know. It's like if you got clubbed over the head with a fucking sledgehammer of modernism. Okay, so now we're at a construction site nearby. See, old boy don't mind. He's just doing his thing over there. Anyway, so here we are on top of the Austin Chalks, those Cretaceous limestones. Cretaceous calcium carbonate, 85% calcium carbonate, just the dead bodies of all the uh, extinct foraminifera, the cocolithophores, and other calcium carbonate single-celled uh, plankton. Okay, and here we go. There's that, uh, that silphium. Silphium albiflorum again. Okay, this population's fucked, uh, unfortunately, but that's a that's a Texas endemic plant, the one I was just showing you earlier. You got, look at those leaves. Stiff as hell with the scabbard hairs and the flowers. Hopefully this gets a chance to go to seed before, uh, before it gets cleared so somebody can come back and collect. And look at those phyleries, just like modified into little spikes. See that? Little lanceolate spikes. Look at that, just, just topping out at like a foot. Okay, whereas, you know, some of most, like Silphium terebinthinaceum gets 12 feet tall. All right, so this is adapting to the drying climate as we move west towards the Edward Plateau and away from the more humid, uh, humid nutsack climate of, uh, you know, the Eastern United States. Is that, do I gotta make it lewd like that? Why did I do that? Say, look at that. I love this plant. I wonder what they're gonna put here, you know? These office parks are nice for illicit activities after hours. You know, after everybody goes home, you know? Maybe there's some guy getting a Hummer and a Celica. You know, I, I don't know. You know, how from, from like a Craigslist uh, uh, meetup? I, who knows, I don't know. I just picture, you know, this is, we're kind of in the suburbs here. And I whenever I think about the suburbs, I like thinking about all the nasty shit that goes on, you know, uh, beneath the guise of wholesomeness. Get your glandularia there. Oh yeah. A lot of verb, a lot of members of the Verbena family in Texas, the Verbenaceae. See that? Bunch of tiny flowers all, all put into that uh, inflorescence that whirls around the stem. But uh, but that's Sylphia, man. It's too bad, you know. This will probably be. It's hideous to think what is gonna go here. Probably something like is going on over there. See that with the landscaping. The, the office park landscaping really kills me. When I get to hell. It's gonna be a 24 hour customer service line, uh, you know, just blaring on the loudspeakers of hell. And then everything's gonna be landscaped with office park landscaping. You know, like that kind of shit. Actually, that's not even, the, that's just a lawn. They got a Nolino over there too, it's not too bad. But it's, you know, you, you get the vibe I'm going for. I'd really be great at crafting your own personal hell, you know? Maybe there's a job like that for me in the afterlife. I can create people's own personal hell for them, you know? And then here on this pile of uh, rubble and uh, Cretaceous carbonate talus, we got uh, another common plant out here in Texas, and a stinky one too. Remember the Cleomacy, uh, which is uh, in the order Brassicale, so it's related to, to mustards. It's got those glucosinolate compounds. This is Polynesia. All right, saw some really cool members of this family in uh, Namibia and South Africa. Very stinky, very adapted to the dry. And you got, uh, it looks like a legume, but it's not, again, no relation to legumes. This is more closely related to brassicas, which also can have that kind of like pod, elongated pod shaped structure called the silic. And again, the, the glands, oh, oh, it smells absolutely terrible. It does, it smells like, like, a, like if you could put a tire fire into an essential oil smell, I should do that. I'm gonna market that in my Etsy boutique. 
boutique, the uh, Crime Pays Etsy boutique. Uh, tire Fire is going to be one of the fragrances. But if you can put a Tire Fire into a fragrance, that's what this uh, the compound coming off those glandular hairs would be. It would be a Wa de Tire Fire. Is that how you say that in French? Wa de, wa de Toilette? Uh, what do you, what do you, what was that, how do you do that? How do you say that? It's a fragrance, fragrance de Tire Fire. Oh, absolutely amazing though, because it creates those compounds to keep shit from eating it. And probably to a lesser extent, to mitigate UV damage and keep uh, moisture inside those uh, stomachs, those little gas ports. Right, and then you got one of the 9,000 species of Elnathera, formerly in the genus Gora. I don't know what they're doing with the taxonomy and is I don't really give a shit anymore, to be honest. I love the plants regardless. Look at those leaves. Glaucus, highly dentate on the margins. Okay, Elnathera though. So you got the eight stamens. You got a four-lobed well, these flowers are kind of fried. You got a four-lobed, uh, you got a four-lobed stigma, and then you got that inferior ovary too. You know, I, you could probably, it'd be worth it to try and dig these up, but you know, you'd have probably like a one percent success rate because that root goes deep. Growing these in cultivation, you got to get them in the ground state. You can't fuck around and keep these things in pots forever, okay? Which you shouldn't do to any plant anyway, unless it's like a succulent, unless it's adapted to that. But uh, that's 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 uh, torture, and I'll report your ass for it. But, uh, you know, I know a guy that grows these, I think, near Fort Worth or something. And, he, you know, he just says you keep them in a pot for a few months, put them in the ground as soon as possible, stake them, etc. But look at it. Nothing growing around it. Bare calcium carbonate to get the limestone nice. Look at this guy. How do you think that is? As you tell its sister species, like I said, is a Silpium laciniatum, which is a much, a much more robust and bigger plant. Why you guys want to do that? Why you want to look at flowers? Why don't you do something like, why don't you get a jab? Go get a jab. Why you want to look at flowers all day? I'm just joking around because, you know, some people are like that. They don't get why you want to do this. And I don't get why they want to do what they do. You know? Just the slow death of, uh, of life in modern consumer society, you know? But it's amazing. You give people a little bit of psychedelics, you open them right up. You got a nice assortment of trash right here. See? You got that, that tire looks great. I mean, the whole area is kind of litter anyway. So the garbage that's on the ground fits right in. Look at that, that the old uh, rusty wire coming out of the tire right there. Uh, anyway, so uh, other components of the floor we're dealing with here. We got this Monarda, member of the mint family, Lamiaceae. It smells pretty good, leaves are pungent. They got those terpenes in there. And uh, I think the common name for this is Lemon Bee Balm, but don't call it that. I shouldn't be telling you that because I don't want you to use it. It's a stupid fucking name. Call it Monarda, you know, because that way when you see other species of Monarda, you'll know that they're Monarda too. And you'll uh, you know be easy for you to look them up and place them evolutionarily as they're members of the mint family Lamiaceae. So look at that flower, bilateral symmetrical flower, aka zygomorphic, and you got that white style poking out the top, and then you got those those brown anthers up there too. Two brown anthers, two stamens, two white filaments, and you got a hundred flowers easily. Many, most not open yet. 100 flowers in this this structure right here which is called the verticillaster it's an inflorescence a compound flower that whirls around the stem okay and they smell so good oh like many like almost all members of the mint family the lamioids down here we got a member of the genus croton aka crouton okay almost looks like a euphorb which it is related to euphorbiaceae is the family right there the poinsettia family but you don't have a cyanthium instead you got actual uh individual stamens uh, coming out of those uh, those flowers. How many species of croton in Texas? It's a very species rich genus too. Look at those, look at it. You got the white anthers, white filaments, all in that little inflorescence, which is not a cyanthium, but you still got, let's look at the fruits over here. Let's look at some of the goddamn fruits. Oh yeah, wait, no, that's not a fruit, hold on. There you go, that was a male plant I was showing you before, I'm a dummy, that's why there's no, no fruits. Anyway, so flowers are unisexual. There's a fruit, and look at the style on top of it, looking like four little hairs. Tree or four little hairs you got up top there. Is that a tree carpal uh, ovary? Three united ovary, like uh, many of the euphorbs? Looks like it, but look at the scales on the leaves. That's a cool thing about croton. They got like a scale like trichomes on the leaves. I've seen a croton tree in uh, Africa. How does shit it get over there? In Namibia. Okay, got some cool crotons in the Dominican Republic. Got some cool croton. Anywhere it's hot and dry, you know, you, you got some you got some really nice uh, members of the Euphorbiaceae in the genus Croton, especially. Look at the ovaries. See that? Look at the little fruit. 
Huh? How, how much longer has it got till it turns uh, brown and matures and uh, got the seed inside there? Then here we go. Remember the Boraginaceae, which uh, those hairs should be a good indicator. See that? Almost, uh, almost spike-like little hairs. All right. You ploca tenella. You got those five, uh, five-lobed uh, flowers, petals actually, but they're fused, so they look more kind of like lobes. And then the whole thing is just covered in the hairs. All right. All right. Other, uh, other genera in this family that uh, you go a little bit west to the drier climates, you get Cryptantha, Johnstonella, Plagiobothrus. Are all cool genera in a borage family with the white flowers. You know, I'm, I'm sweating my ass off. I've been looking at the same fucking piece of ground for 20 minutes. That's how it goes sometimes, you know. But that's good. That means you're learning. You know, get your money shots. Look at the, you know, think about some things. Ask yourself some questions. Take some take some good photos. Taking photos is how you learn. That's why I take photos. I, I reference them later. I noticed shit in the photos I didn't see when I was out there sweating my ass off in a 98 degree heat. All right, now this plant, this is pretty cool, okay? It just looks like a weed, it's a native, but it just looks like a weedy fucking solanum. Remember the uh, the tomato and potato genus solanum? It's a, that's a genus that needs to be split up if there was one. Maybe not, I don't know, I'm just talking my ass. Anyway, there's the fruits, very spiky, okay? Native plant to Texas, Oklahoma, much of the central United States, okay? But the flowers exhibit two things that are really cool here, all right? One is heteranthy, and the other, is an anthiostyle and we look at the flowers right there and you can see you got five anthers but one of them looks like a goddamn inflated chili pepper four just look normal one looks like an inflated chili pepper and then you got that style poking off to the left right there the style can either poke off to the left or poke off to the right either way that's called an anthiostyle the mirror image uh, flower so you get you know it's uh it's a basically thought to be a way to avoid uh, self-pollination but these are these are self-compatible flowers anyway and then on top of that at the ends of those if you could see that the ends of those anthers you got those holes these are porocytal anthers for the buzz pollination okay so buzz pollination is a way to control your release of pollen so you don't dump it all at once all right it's like uh it's like the cereal dispensers at the motel six actually fuck motel six they don't do the continental breakfast anymore but if you go to someplace fancy like a best western where they got the continental breakfast and maybe if you're lucky they got the texas toast waffle machine then they got those cereal dispensers and that's what buzz pollination is so a bee vibrates at the right frequency and pollen just dumps out of those those little uh, holes at the ends of those anthers all right in many many unrelated lineages of plants uh, have buzz pollination and pore subtle anthers but either way you see those pores at the ends of those anthers that's a good giveaway for buzz pollination but uh, but two different sets of anthers this is like a senna this is kind of like the genus Senna from the unrelated pea family. So you got the style going off to the left. Some of the flowers have the style going off to the right. And then you got two different sets of anthers. Fucking weird. But why would a plant do that? What's the adaptive benefit in evolving? You know, you got five anthers and one of them evolves to look like a goddamn inflated serrano pepper. And then you got the style poking off to the left. In most flowers, that style is just in the center of the plant. That's where it makes the most sense to be. It's where it's going to get dosed with pollen. To pollinate the flowers so what's the adaptive benefit of that so many questions to ask and then why why is one anther different is it just producing feeder pollen sterile feeder pollen so it doesn't have to invest more energy in making that pollen fertile and it's just producing feeder pollen to get the, the insects in there or what it's odd you know so many questions to ask as we sit in this uh, uh site of a probably a fucking future data center or some depressing uh some future offices of some terrible health insurance coming. Who knows what it could be? Could be any one of like 900 different bleak and obnoxious uh, uh, pieces of infrastructure of modern American society. Who knows what it'll be? But you got, you still got a lot of cool plants here, at least for the time being. And these guys have been cool. They haven't kicked this out yet. They've been tolerant, you know, just kind of wondering what the fuck we're doing. But, uh, you know, seem like nice guys. All right, here we go. Let's keep moving on. That guy working in the back calls nice. He was all excited when we told him what we were doing. We he even offered to dig one of the sylphium out for us. You know? Let me invite him over, get some uh, you know, get some beers for him and fizzy water for me. Look at this, look how close that water table is. You know, you ever been to like Barton Springs or any of those places where they got the, you know, you could go swimming in Austin? It's because of water table that, that limestone acts like a percolator, it's like a perfect filter for the water. See that? Oh, you got some, was that sylphium down there too? Oh, shit. See, my buddy's a roofing contractor, so he gave me a towel to put on so I don't sweat my ass off. Works pretty good. 
Oh, so much diversity and it's all about to get annihilated. It's okay. Society is about to get annihilated in the next hundred years <laughs> anyway. So hopefully I'll be gone by the time it gets really ugly. Uh, isn't that the uh, American outlook? Uh, anyway, uh, so look at that. There you go. This is a member of the genus Camacrista from uh, the uh, Cesalpinioid subfamily of the P family Fabaceae. Look at the uh, inside of those petals with the red striations, and you got all those stamens in there. It seemed to be numbering 10. Is it 10 or is it 9? Uh, one of those, one of those two. Most peas tend to have 10. Some uh, have lost one, one stamen. And then you got those sepals that acted like little cups. All right, and then of course the whole thing. You got the pinnate leaves, okay? Just like uh, some of the uh, closely related mimosas. You had 10 stamens, and they look like they're, uh, see those white striations on the anthers? Looks like they're uh, laterally dehissing. I couldn't tell if there were pores at the end of those anthers or not. Senna, which is also in this subfamily, is porocytal. This porocytal buzz pollination. But uh, these 10 stamens look like they're laterally dehissing. Don't quote me on it, though. But what's interesting about these flowers is they're not providing nectar. They're just providing pollen for bees and wasps. But what they do have, and this is really, really bizarre, is extra floral nectaries on the uh, branches beneath the, uh, the flowers. And you can see... There's an extra floral nectary right there. See that little, little yellow disc? How about that? So it's producing nectar on the vegetative parts of the flower. What the shit is that about? Why does it do that? Huh? Could it, why would it be wanting to attract insects? Well, let's not anthropomorphize here. But why? what would be the adaptive benefit in attracting insects to the vegetative parts, to the veggie parts? Huh? Some plants do that as a form of defense. You know, they're basically hiring bouncers. All right, same thing with other, you know, other plants, uh, and many plants in the tropics will provide housing for ants uh, to act as bouncers for them. But uh, in the case of Camacristi, you obviously see that little nectar right there, a little yellow dot. Some of the species of Senna do that too. Pretty remarkable, huh? Look at that. Again, P family, Fabaceae, Cesalpinioid subfamily. There's those flowers. Ten stamens, no nectar, just pollen. Okay, so we're going to town digging them up. Uh, maybe those will survive, maybe not. Probably not, but it's worth the shot. But this one I'm going to accession at the herbarium. It's going to be a herbarium voucher. Look at how thick that root is, all right? And uh, yeah, it's kind of sticky, too. It's got some nice resin in there. It smells pretty good. So uh, another adaptation to a dry environment. Got a, got a big tuberous tap root that goes down quite a few feet into the ground, okay? So you could tolerate, uh, you know, seasonal dryness and heat and it just go dormant and this broke off readily pretty readily pretty easily from the rest of the plant down there so where i broke this up this plant is still alive in the ground it would re-sprout next year if the site wasn't being turned in to the future home of an office park or you know god knows whatever i'm just gonna go with health insurance offices because i fucking hate health insurance companies more than than uh, most other entities in this country so it just makes me feel good in terms of my spite but uh but anyway, so I'll session this at the herbarium and it'll be a nice memento for this population that used to uh, grow here in the dry land prairie of central Texas. Son of a dick, I just touched the poison ivy too. God damn it, you know, sometimes you can't win. All right, I'm just gonna have to go wash that off. Now see those, the red stems, kind of silvery sheen to the leaves and leaves of three, smooth, no hairs. Ugh, got that you rush all right in there. That's all I got for you today, go fuck yourself, bang.